to Westminster where MPs are debating the Brexit bill behind me. Nicola Sturgeon says the UK's vote to leave the EU has left her no choice but to call a second referendum on independence. So let's take a look at the process in a little bit more detail for you. What does Mrs Sturgeon need to do next? Well, the First Minister first needs to ask the Scottish Parliament to request a Section 30 order from Westminster, which she has said she will do as early as next week. If she gains approval from her own government, she must then seek permission from Westminster. Both the House of Commons and the Lords would have to approve the request. This permission is needed to make the referendum legally binding. There's no time frame for when a decision would be made. If approval is given, the wrangling will start over the timing of the vote. The Scottish First Minister says it should take place before Brexit is completed, between the autumn of 2018 and the spring of 2019 while the UK government may argue it should take place after Britain leaves the EU. Earlier on, I spoke to the former Deputy Prime Minister, Lord Heseltine, who warned of years of uncertainty and unpredictability. Who knows what's going to happen to British public opinion? And the government itself certainly has no idea what sort of deal it's going to get. And there's a very wide range of opinions about all of that. So what we, the one thing we know is we have got years of uncertainty, unpredictability. And the damage that that can do to the self-interest of this country is very significant, because all over the world, people are making decisions about whether to invest here or not. And uh, I do know something about what goes on in boardrooms. Uh, they wait. They don't take a risk. They just put decisions on hold. So we've got a very difficult period ahead. And uh, of course, my views are clear. We should never have embarked upon this process. But we've passed that now. The, there is a mandate to negotiate. And uh, I, I'm sure that one way or another, uh, Theresa May will get the mandate to do that. Uh, the uh, enhancement and maintenance of the United Kingdom is a proven and much treasured part of our history. Uh, I personally would be appalled to see the fragmentation of the United Kingdom, whether it be Scotland, which uh, we know is now hankering after a second referendum, or indeed the implications in Northern Ireland, where you've seen a significant advance of Sinn Féin, and we could be facing the same sort of dialogue there. So uh, the, the whole process of creating instability is actually what the referendum has triggered. I don't like it. I wish it hadn't happened. But uh, we have to start the process, as I have said, from a few days after the referendum itself. Uh, to me, the self-interest of our country is interwoven with the stability and prosperity of Europe. That's what every prime minister that I've ever worked for believed and set out to achieve. And I believe it profoundly. So, yes, you can point to the position in Scotland and say this would be unfortunate. So, indeed, it would. But suppose it was part of a trigger mechanism that unraveled the European Union itself. Now, let's have no shadow of doubt, the European politicians will fight like tigers to stop that happening, because they don't want Sardinia and Corsica and other places to start peeling off in the way that Scotland is trying to do. But nor, this is the hidden menace of it all, nor do they want to create a situation in which Britain leaves the European Union, creating a precedent which other electorates then demand referenda to see if they can get a deal of half commitment to the European Union. And they'll fight hard to prevent that circumstance arising, which means that we are in a negotiating position where the die is cast against us. That was Lord Heseltine speaking to me earlier on this afternoon here on Sky News. So Scotland's First Minister has announced plans to hold an historic second referendum on breaking away from the United Kingdom. 
Nicola Sturgeon said she believes the Scottish people will now choose to break away from Britain in order to stay in the EU. Joined by John Curtis, Professor of Politics at Strathclyde University. Hello to you, Professor. Thanks for joining us. What do you make of what happened today? Well, I think in one sense it wasn't a surprise. The uh, First Minister's rhetoric has got harder and harder since the June the 24th last year when it became clear that Scotland had voted to remain but the rest of the UK had voted to leave the European Union. Um, I think it was a question of when the announcement was going to be made rather than if. Some of us thought that maybe the SNP conference which takes place this weekend would be the occasion when the announcement was made. Well, it looks as though um, the First Minister decided to get it in early um, and indeed to get it in before even the uh, bill that uh, will uh, give the Theresa May the authority to invoke Article 50 of the European Union treaties um, is actually passed. But it's not in her gift, is it? It's not in her gift. What the First Minister announced today was that she was going to ask the Scottish Parliament to request the UK Parliament, and therefore for practical purposes the UK Government, for permission to get a Section 30 order. And that is an order under the original Scotland Act which transfers authority from the House of Commons to the Scottish Parliament. Now, the question of whether or not Scotland should or should not be part of the United Kingdom is a so-called reserved issue, i.e. it's one of those things about Scotland that the Scottish Parliament cannot decide for itself. When we had the referendum in 2014, a temporary grant of authority came from the place behind us to the Scottish Parliament. Nicola Sturgeon is now effectively asking for another grant of authority. OK, so it, basically it's up to Theresa May whether or not she allows a second It referendum. is effectively up to Theresa May, and so far the UK government has not given us any clue. They studiously refuse... Tricky. It's tricky. It's a tricky one, of course, because if she says no, well, maybe that will be the final straw that breaks the camel's back so far Scottish as Scottish people will not be happy with uh, a Prime Minister down in London saying, no, you can't do that. No, I think the more interesting question is the question of timing. Yes. Will she say, well, OK, I accept you're not very happy about the situation, so you can have a referendum after the United Kingdom have left, has left the EU, but not beforehand because it would create too much uncertainty. Much, of course, of the speech that Nicola Sturgeon made today was actually her argument as to, no, no, actually, the reason why we need to have this referendum before the UK leaves the European Union is because, effectively, she wants to try to maintain Scotland's membership of the single market. And as she put it, once we're out, it's going to be much more difficult to get back in. Yeah, but Scot then that takes us on to what happens if the independence referendum does go ahead and if Scotland does leave the Union. Where does that leave Scotland as far as the European Union is concerned? Well, that, of course, is another $64,000 question. Now, I'm the, glad I asked it. The European Commission did come out with a statement this afternoon saying, no, the so-called Barroso doctrine, that is, Scotland becomes an independent state, it will have to apply to join the European Union just like everybody else uh, would apply. I think, however, in practice, the question would be much more difficult for the European Union because, in effect, if it were to try to insist that Scotland started from scratch, it would be saying, well, hang on, here's a part of the European, already a part of the European Union, it fully uh, uh, signed up to all the laws and regulations of the European Union, and it's democratically elected to become an independent state, it's democratically elected to stay inside the European Union, is the European Union then going to say, no, you can't do that? Remember the European Union, one of its central ethos is to uphold democracy. So I think the truth is this is a difficult call for the European Union, but so and some other European Union uh, uh, spokespersons in the past have kind of been somewhat softer in their response. I think it's another one yeah, to watch. Yeah, Corsica will be looking at, um, at what France might do and vice versa, and then of course we might see what happened with, with Spain Indeed. as well. But what about the euro and the pound? What would Scotland do in that regard? Oh, I think, look, the practical position is that there is no way that the European Union is in any position to insist that any country signs up to the euro. Sweden has demonstrated that's what that. They, that's what they have. Um, uh, but, 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 but there are a number of countries inside the European Union who are not signed up to the euro. And Sweden is the most obvious example of a country which held a referendum on the subject. People said no. And it ain't happening. And the truth is, at least until the euro is an awful lot stronger currency than it has been in the last 10 years, there is just no way in which the European Union can insist that any member state actually joins. Scotland might prefer to be... Uh... Well, it might do. I mean, th th there is a crucial question, certainly about currency. And one of the things that we should now look out for is a report from Andrew Wilson, the former SNP yeah. MSP, to look once again at the economic case for um, independence. And one of the issues he expects to address is currency. I think it's widely anticipated the SNP certainly will not go in with the same policy of last time, 
which was we will seek monetary union, i.e. sharing the pound with the United Kingdom, because they know that the answer to that is no. Okay. Uh, they will get a different answer, I think, this time. Thanks very much indeed. That's Indy Ref 2 talking Brexit as well in just a moment here on Sky. Do stay tuned our way.